This is Southern Cross News with Rick Fontaine. Uh, good evening, everyone. The Tasmanian Electoral Commission is reviewing its cyber security measures after voter data was stolen through a third party provider based in Spain. Details of up to 4,000 people who registered for express votes have been exposed through the hack, with those affected urged to be extra vigilant for scammers. The Tasmanian Electoral Commission has had a busy year, running three major elections. The worst possible time for it to be hit by a cyber security attack. We take full responsibility for this uh, and, and apologise to all of those individuals affected. The breach happened on Wednesday, hackers exploiting a security hole at Spanish-based company Typeform and stealing a backup file. That file containing information collected through five forms on the Electoral Commission's website. Some of those were things such as candidate statements, which is public information anyway, but the key one of concern for us that we need to inform people of is our express vote application process. Up to 4,000 Tasmanians who applied for express votes have been exposed. Their names, address, email and date of birth is believed to be among the stolen data. Also included, their personal reasons for needing an express vote. You know, I understand that it has been uh, relatively contained to around 4,000 um, uh, uh, people and, uh, and their information, but it is concerning. Uh, the Chief Information Officer is working closely with the TEC. Anyone who has, whose information has been stolen may be now more susceptible to um, suspicious and malicious emails or phone scams. It's the second major cyber breach in the last month. Page up job application systems used by UTAS and the Tasmanian government have also been hit. Look, it's deeply concerning that um, Tasmanians' personal details uh, have been breached. Uh, we would like to see a government that is proactive when it comes to security of data across all government areas. All you can do is take every step that you can to ensure that information and data is secure. Um, and that's what we're doing uh, and the Chief Information Officer has been working very closely on these matters. The Electoral Commission says the hack didn't affect the voting process. Michael Breen, Southern Cross News. Labor has leapt on Sunday penalty rate cuts coming into effect today, claiming some workers in Braddon will be more than $3,000 worse off a year. The Liberals are defending the independence of the Fair Work Commission as the party spruiks its own tax relief coming into effect. It's no Sunday stroll for these workers in Burnie. From today they say they'll be worse off after Sunday penalty rate cuts come into effect. There are many people working in hospitality, retail and pharmacy in Tasmania right here today on this Sunday who will be up to $20, $30 a day worse off. All up, Labor claims that will see some in Braddon shortchanged $3,000 less each year. The decision made in 2016 by the Fair Work Commission will see some in retail and hospitality earn between 10 and 15% less on Sundays. Got a young family, children, um, so doing things with them, actually supporting a family, it's, yeah, it makes a big difference. We'll definitely have to find a second job, I'm already starting looking. Unions also hit the ground in the electorate today, warning the effects would be wide-reaching. Well over 20,000 Tasmanians who work in already low-paid jobs in retail, fast food, pharmacy and hospitality. But Liberal candidate Brett Whiteley says it's Labor staging the wages roadblock. I support the independence of the Fair Work Commission, a commission that was set up, let's not forget this today, that this was set up by the Labor government. When Bill Shorten was Employment Minister, they insisted on an independent body which we have supported all the way through. He also talked up the federal government's tax relief package coming into effect today, with 40,000 people in Braddon to benefit. Nearly 15,000 of those people will be receiving the full benefit of $530 per year. Sean McComish, Southern Cross News. The sacrifice and commitment of Tasmania's reservists have been marked with a march and ceremony at the Hobart Cenotaph this morning. Reserve Forces Day recognising people who served part-time roles to help bolster the capability of the Navy, Army and Air Force. And the only thing that distinguishes a reservist is that they have a civilian job as well. Uh, but they need to meet the standards set by the Army or the Navy or the Air Force. So they're critical 
to Australia's ability to deploy forces overseas. Reservists can be involved in humanitarian, disaster relief and combat missions. Clarence have come out on top in a tight tussle with Launceston in the TSLW today. Sitting at second and third on the competition ladder, Little separated the two sides in the first term. Majors from Tiana Ford, Natalie Heggie and Darcy Elliston helped the Roos along to a handy half-time lead before Georgia Hill and Zoe Claridge provided the home side with a spark. But it wasn't enough to topple the Roos, with visitors getting up by 25 points. The Tasmanian Magpies have made history today, claiming their first Australian Netball League Premiership. Taking on the Canberra Giants, the Magpies had 16 points on the board come quarter time to lead by four. The Giants fighting back in the second, closing the margin to just one at the main break. Shot for shot in the second half, it was anyone's for the taking, with the Pies blocking out the rowdy Canberra crowd and claiming their first ANL title, 73 goals to 72. Good on them. With the race for the NPL title heating up, the Hobart Zebras have made a big statement this afternoon, thrashing Olympia on their home deck. It took just 12 minutes of play for the visitors to strike courtesy of Ford Jakob Sklenar and from there it was a day to forget for the Warriors. The Zebras putting three more through the back of the net before half time to put the match out of reach with Sklenar slotting his third for the day just before the full time whistle to see his side home five goals to nil. With the race for the NPL title heating up, the Hobart Zebras have made a big statement this afternoon, thrashing Olympia on their home deck. It took just 12 minutes of play for the visitors to strike courtesy of Ford Jakob Sklenar, and from there it was a day to forget for the Warriors. The Zebras putting three more through the back of the net before half time to put the match out of reach, with Sklenar slotting his third for the day just before the full time whistle to see his side home five goals to nil. 14 Australians will be in action at Wimbledon when play at the All England Club gets underway tomorrow night. And no one is happier to be out there than Nick Kyrgios, who missed three months earlier this year with an elbow injury. I'm not going to take for granted now being healthy, being able to compete and, and win matches. You know, that was one thing. I did miss winning and I missed, you know, just going out there and doing my thing when I was on court. So, yeah, it was tough. It gave me another perspective to look at it from. Serena Williams is chasing her 24th Grand Slam title, Roger Federer his ninth Wimbledon crown. And it's all live and free on the screens of 7-2 from 8.30 tomorrow night. Basketball and Lauren Nicholson has once again proved herself as one of the Seabulls' most dangerous players, leading the Tawns to a hard-fought victory at home overnight. Over on the northwest coast, the Thunder kept themselves in the finals hunt with a dominant display over Dandenong. Always rising to the occasion in front of the home crowd, Lauren Nicholson set the tone, putting on 29 points for the match as Elfin Stadium came to life. <laughs> Ellie Collins looked sharp, helping to give the Torns a 13-point advantage at the first change. Captain Lauren Mansfield gritty around the ball as always, combining with Nicholson to run the Rangers off their feet. The visitors finding some second half form, forcing the Torns to dig deep. And with their big names firing, that's exactly what they did. Jumping up to fifth on the Siebel ladder with the eight point win. Jeremiah Ingram was quick to remind Dandenong whose house they were in. The American import leading the way with 24 points as the Thunder muscled their way back from an early deficit to take a four point lead into the second half. With the Northwest faithful behind them, the home side stepped things up in the third term. NBL guard Mason Bragg drawing in the Rangers' defence and allowing Joe Chilcott to find his range from down deep. The visitors answering back to keep things interesting, but with a spot inside the top eight on the line, the Thunder refused to budge, finishing strong to come away the 11-point winners. And finally in sport, Tasmanian basketball young gun Hunter Clark has helped the Crocs along to a thrilling two-point win in their FIBA Under-17 World Cup opener against the Dominican Republic in Argentina overnight. The Aussies led the way early on before the Dominicans found a way to edge back into the match and set things up for an intense final half. The Crocs holding their nerve in the home stretch to come away the 73 to 71 point winners. They take on Turkey tomorrow night. Good evening. A fine and mostly sunny day with showers about the west far south in Bass Strait Islands. 15 was the top in Hobart today. It was 14 in Launceston and Burnie and 13 in Devonport.
Smithton and St Helens shared Hobart's high of 15. Elsewhere, 14 was the number of the day, with King Island, Flinders Island, Low Head, Friendly Beaches, Mariah Island, Grove, Campania and Strawn sharing that top number. It was 13 at Ooze and just 6 at Lyoweenie. Here we can see some cumulus cloud bringing showers to parts of the state and zooming out a trough lay over Queensland today and a large mass of cloud sat over the southwest of the mainland just encroaching on WA. Tomorrow a high pressure system moves into the Tasman with the flow tending northwesterly over Tasmania and that trough persists over Queensland. Winds west to northwesterly reaching 25 knots in the south, swells building from 2 to 4 metres later in the day. Those northwesterly winds mean we have a gale warning from southeast Cape to Sandy Cape, a strong wind warning between St Helens Point and southeast Cape, as well as from Sandy Cape to Stanley, and a small craft wind alert for the southwest lakes. A sunny day for Hobart tomorrow, a top of 14, 14 also for Dover and Ouse. Launceston early frost before a partly cloudy day, 14, a possible shower for Devonport, 13, Scottsdale, 12. Showers for Burnie 13 the top, Strawn a possible shower 14, Stanley 13, St Helens mostly sunny looking at a top of 15, Swansea sunny and 14, Ross 11. Looking ahead to Tuesday, showers about the south and west of the state but fine elsewhere. Wednesday mostly fine with a bit of wet weather in the north and west and Thursday more showers for the west and north of the state extending statewide through the afternoon. Looking further north tomorrow, rain for Perth, showers for Sydney and Brisbane, a mostly sunny day for Adelaide and a frosty start for Melbourne. And finally, taking a look at the current conditions around the state, Hobart 9 degrees and clear, Launceston 7 and clear, Devonport 8 and clear. And that's all for tonight's weather. Thanks, Rick. Fabulous. Thanks, Rick. Been a lovely day weather-wise. Well, that is all your news for this Sunday, the 1st of July. Thanks for your company. Joe Palmer will join you tomorrow night from 6pm. Good night.